You can turn in your King James Bible to Matthew chapter 27. I'm going to be doing a sermon request today. I've had this from a couple of different people now, and I've been told that uh, Trinitarians are using this as an argument against the Godhead doctrine, and also that Muslims have been using this. Um, birds of a feather flock together, apparently. Uh, lost people like to be around lost people. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. Let's read here. It says, And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? If Jesus is God, why would he call out to the Father and say, My God? Wouldn't that mean that Jesus and the Father are two separate gods, or that Jesus is not God? Wouldn't that mean that? Stick with me. Revelation chapter 3. And I'll tell you right now, just to in kind of encourage the brethren out there, this isn't the kind of question you look at and you say, oh, that's easy. You know, There are some things that are easy. Some things you say, okay, well, I have to pray about this. Let me, you know, oh, you're doubting? No, I'm not doubting. I know what the Bible teaches, and Scripture doesn't contradict. At least, if you have a King James Bible, it doesn't contradict. But um, there has to be an explanation for this. What would that explanation be? Okay, well, I might need to pray about this and go through the Scriptures and take a little bit of time here. Um, if you can't, you know, people have this modern day fast food mentality when it comes to Christianity and they say, if you can't answer me in you know, 30 seconds or less, then I've proved you wrong. No, it might take me a little while to study. I might have to say, hey, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that yet, but I'll get you the answer. Let me pray about it. Let me search the scriptures. That's what you do. Um, I don't expect people out there, if you, you know, you should answer my things I say and whatever else, and you shouldn't have any time to think about things. You shouldn't study. Just believe me or else, you know. No. Um, there are some times that you might need to actually sit down and go through the scriptures and pray about it. But uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. Here we have another one. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Jesus Christ is speaking there. You say, well, see, again, if Jesus was truly God, why would he be calling the Father my God? Hmm. Well, if you want to try to use the Bible to prove that Jesus is not God, then uh, there's a danger that you're going to get cut. Okay, the Bible is a two-edged sword, and you can't mess around with this book if you're lost. Because you will make a mess of yourself. You will, you will destroy yourself. Okay? So, if you're trying to say, I can prove that Jesus is not God by using the Bible, then I can continue this line of thinking and show that you're a hypocrite. If you're out there saying these things. Go to Hebrews chapter 1. Why does Jesus call the Father my God? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. Well, there's an even more important question that we're going to get to here in just a few minutes. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. You see, oh, there's, see there's the separation again. The Son versus God. Hmm. Keep reading who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. The express image of the person of God. That's Jesus Christ. Hmm. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus Christ purged us from our sins. And then he sits down on the right hand of the majesty on high. You say, well, see, they're two different gods. They're two different ones. They're two different persons or something like that. Uh, no, body and soul can separate as well as the spirit. And there are jobs <clears throat> for each part of the Godhead there. Jesus Christ has some prophecies <clears throat> written about him, particularly in the book of Psalms, that he has to fulfill as the physical body of God. The soul stays in heaven, but yet is inside the body. 
There's a connection there, you see. It's eternal. Well, let's keep reading here. It gets really good. Verse 4, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Still speaking about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Why would the Lord say that, by the way? I will be to him a father. Because they're assuming their roles. I am the soul, I will be to him a father. And the body of God, he will be to me a son. Why? Because there's work that he needs to do on the earth. He needs to come down. He can't just show up and say, poof, here I am. They'd say, well, you know, I, I know what it's like to suffer. You were never even born. You don't know what it's like to grow up and go through teething and having to nurse and having to have your diaper changed. And you don't know what it's like to be us. You just poof, showed up. Oh, okay, well, then I'll be born of a, of a woman. Well, then, you know, then they'd say, well, okay, but who's your father? See, the Lord worked it out perfectly when he came here to the earth. It wasn't some kind of a thing that God created this guy named Jesus and said, oh, you're going to be my son now or something. No, God created Adam and said, you'll be my son. All right, there's a big difference there. You have to get a hold of that thing. Verse 6, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, who is the he? God. He saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Um, why would all the angels of God worship a created being? Did God say that about Adam? Hey, um, let all the angels of God worship Adam. He created Adam. Why would all the angels of God worship the first begotten? Hmm, because he is God. Verse 7. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Now here's the good one. Okay, This is where you destroy this whole thing of why would Jesus call the Father my God. But unto the Son he saith. What's the context? God the Father. God the Father. Unto the Son he saith. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. There's a kingdom promised to Jesus Christ that he's going to rule and reign here on the earth, headquartered in Jerusalem. Hmm. But the Father says to the Son, O God. So, um, Hey, I can prove that Jesus Christ is not, you know, truly God because he says, my God, my God. Well, uh, right here in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, you have the Father saying to Jesus the Son, O God, telling the angels to worship them. And then he says, um, O God. <laughs> um, maybe you could just read the plain English of the King James Bible and realize that Jesus says, my God. And the Father says, O God. When they refer to themselves, they refer to themselves as God. Because they are God. Only one God. <clears throat> Verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God. Now he defines himself. Speaking to the Son, he says, O God. And he says, therefore thy God, or even God, Excuse me. Therefore, God, even thy God. <laughs> they just call each other God is the whole thing. Why? Because they speak absolute truth. Jesus Christ is truth personified. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He's the body. You can't get to the Father as a soul because the soul didn't die on the cross in the sense of a soul doesn't die. It's eternal. Souls can't die. The Father can't die. Jesus Christ, the body, died. It's really not that difficult. But man has to make it difficult to cover up for his sin. The Muslim comes along and he says, Allah had no son. There can't be any man named Jesus that could actually be the son of God and, and yet God himself. And that doesn't work. So we have to try to We'll go through the Bible. Yeah, we'll read the Bible. 
the double-edged sword that we're not even able to understand. Well, I'll get back to that. We'll read through the Bible and we'll try to find places where we can tear Jesus down. The Trinitarian comes out and he says, oh, this is preposterous, that, that Jesus Christ is the, and the Father are the same being, they're the same person. That's preposterous. That is not true. Jesus is not the Father. And I've seen Trinitarians, they get just as rabid as any crazed Muslim out there. You say, Jesus is the Father. He is not the Father. And they get mad. Heretic! You're outside of Christianity because you attack the Trinity. Okay. <laughs> All right, papist. Um, but what is, what's their problem? What's a Trinitarian's problem? They're trying to tear Jesus down. They always do. I believe that Jesus Christ is the most highly exalted being in heaven. Well, but let me show you the one verse over here. Let me show you this verse over there. What's the problem? Why do, you, why do you have to feel a need to tear Jesus Christ down? They all do it. Interesting. John chapter 20. I'll show you another passage of Scripture here to really get the destroy this whole argument. And we can go through so many Scriptures, by the way, where Jesus Christ says plainly that He is God. And I'm going to show you a good one here for all the Muslims out there that say that Jesus never said that He was God. Well, you're quite ignorant. Um, quite ignorant. Jesus never, you know, said that he was the Father. Uh, yes, he did, to the Trinitarians. Okay, um, he's the Father in the sense of being God. All right, um, he's not the Father in the sense of body, not being the soul. All right, um, I am. My body is not my soul. They're two separate things. But yet, my body and my soul are Brian Enlinger. Oh, it's so deep. We have to try to come up with other philosophies to explain it away or something. No, you just understand that's the way it works. All right, John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. See a little tie in there? Interesting. Uh, verse 28. Jump down to verse 28. So he says, Go to my brethren and say, I'm going to go to my father. Okay, and who's my father? My God and your God. Okay, did you get that? Go to my brethren, tell them, I'm going to my father and your father, my God and your God. Verse 28. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Speaking to Jesus. Verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, I thank you for the nice honor, but I'm not your God. You see, I already said back there to Mary that, you know, I'm going to my Father who is your God, so I'm not the same. Thomas, I appreciate it, but you're confused. Did he say that? No, he didn't say that. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, my Lord and my God, me, Jesus says it. Thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. <laughs> there you go. Jesus Christ could have very you know, easily said, oh, oh no, um, Thomas, you're confused. I am but a prophet. Allah had no son. Oh, I mean, uh, the, the, the Father, God the Father had no son. I am not the Father. The Father is not me. He didn't say that. My Father, your Father. My God, your God. Thomas, my Lord and my God. Jesus says, saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me. Philip, John chapter 14, show us the Father and it sufficeth us. Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. That's so plain. So very plain. Romans chapter 9. And I've done so many studies. I, you know, I'm not going to keep going over the same scriptures over and over again. Just watch all my sermons on the Godhead doctrine. And uh, if the Lord is with you, you will be convinced by the Scriptures, not by me. 
But, uh, well, I just can't believe this. Oh, okay, here we go. Romans chapter 9, verse 20. Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? But that's exactly what they do. I can't, oh, I just can't believe it. I have to go after God on this whole thing. I, I, I don't understand. Why would God call himself my God and, and oh God and all this other stuff? I don't understand. Could it be just supposed to take his word and say, I believe this book? Maybe this book is a lot more important than most people give it credit for. An entitled little America here with the, oh, I don't care about the Bible. I have my Jesus and I don't really care what the Bible says. I, you know, who cares about the Bible? The Bible's not that important. Oh, somebody took words out of the King James Bible and added words to it and, and this and that and whatever else. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Um, maybe you better put this Bible up in a higher position. You know, the word Trinity is not in there. You know, well, the Bible, the word Bible's not in it. Okay, stupid. Uh, in the scriptures. The word Trinity's not in there. Maybe you shouldn't call it a orthodox core teaching, whatever. Maybe you should say, hmm, there's probably a reason why the word Trinity's not in there. I don't think God wants to be called by a girl's name. You know, um, go to church. It's not in here. Maybe there's a reason for that. Just maybe. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Just amazes me. It's just so simple. So very simple. People have to complicate it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 through 16. Now we have received, those of us that are saved, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. That's something that is a core, one of the core doctrines that you need to get figured out as a Christian. Um, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, their foolishness unto him. Um, you can't rewrite this book and make it easier to understand for the lost world out there. Uh, you can't say, well, I need to add philosophy into what the Bible teaches to try to make sense of whatever. You can't do that. Um, if somebody is lost, if they are in their self-righteous, prideful, sinful state, God will not reveal himself to them. Okay, see, the thing that's different about Christianity is Christianity is a religion of revelation. That's why it's such an important thing. You have to come to God on his terms, and then he reveals things to you. It isn't some kind of a thing of, I've read the different philosophies and I choose Islam. I choose, you know, Zen Buddhism or something like this because it most appeals to me and I think it makes the most sense for my particular culture and way of the... No. What it is, this book is a dead book to you until you get saved. It doesn't make a bit of sense to you. This, well, this is ridiculous. This is nonsense. And you will read through this book and you will cut yourself to pieces with this book. This book doesn't work until you get saved. And the way that you get saved is to humble yourself and come to God as a sinner and get down in the mud and the muck and the mire and say, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I've made a mess of my life. I'm about ready to blow my brains out. God, I need help. Please, God, save me. I read that book. I, somebody gave me a copy of this blessed book, and I read how that Jesus Christ died for sinners. I'm such an unworthy, miserable wretch, Lord. I don't deserve salvation, but if you would please save me, I'm sure I have a lot of questions. Call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You get a bunch of satanic devils out there and they say oh, it's just a, a mental consent to facts or you just kind of, you know, go into this trance and you just say, oh, I'm saved. There we go. 
you know, why? Well, I've, I believe it. I can envision it. I'm, you know, a good Gnostic or whatever. <laughs> That's what they are. Um, God has to reveal himself to you. God has to reveal his word to you. And that's why if you don't understand it, it's because you're lost. Well, explain it to me and then I'll get saved or something like this. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. God is not interested in saving the righteous. He doesn't call the righteous. He calls sinners, sinners, sinners to repentance. Are you a sinner? The Bible says all of sin. Do you believe that? I'm, uh, you know, okay, well, I'm a good person. I never robbed the bank or murdered people. I'm not like Hitler or something. Um, <laughs> little self-righteousness there. But that's why most people die and go to hell. So, what more can I say? Um, Trinitarians, if you want to try to use this passage, the Revelation 3.12, to say that, you know, that somehow proves that Jesus Christ and the Father are separate, they're not the same, then you're teaching two different gods. Okay, that's a problem. And that's what Trinitarianism teaches. God the Father, God the Son, they're not the same. That's two. Well, no, it's not two, it's one. <laughs> okay, then they're the same. No, they're not the same, they're different. Okay, we could just keep going on and on with this insanity. Or we can just, you know, come to the end of that nuttiness and say, whatever here. <laughs> Um, just abandon it as a satanic philosophy the Trinitarianism is. All right. Um, the answer to the fool according to his folly. Some Trinitarian devil comes along and they say, well, Revelation 3.12, Jesus says, my God. Okay. A couple times in, in there in uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, he also says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So if he and the Father are one and the same, then see, uh, you know, Answer the fool according to their folly when you have a Trinitarian say that, and you say that you believe in two different gods, or that Jesus Christ is not God, plain and simple. The Muslim comes along and he says, what about this? You say, well, do you believe that the Word of God is perfect in that passage right there? <laughs> they don't believe it. Oh, well, um, well, I, I think that, uh, yeah, yes, okay, maybe. All right, then let me show you over here in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, where the Father says to Jesus, O oh God, and he worships him as God. So if you want to use the Bible, you're going to have a problem. Because you see, in the Bible, all parts of the Godhead call each other God. Why? Well, I don't know if it should be written, because that's the way God wrote it. And if you're a natural man, then you aren't going to receive that. It's not going to make any sense to you. So, that is going to be it. And, um, Thank you to those of you out there that requested this sermon. And um, another one that I have a sermon request on that I'm currently working on, it's going to be a bigger study. Uh, I have to go through a lot of scriptures and things. It takes time. I need to go you know, look up all the references, read them, go over everything. And that is the thing of the working of miracles. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks about different, sign, or different gifts, excuse me, not sign gifts, but different gifts given to the body of Christ. And one of them is the working of miracles. And the question there is, is the working of miracles for today? Can we do the working of miracles right now? What do you think about that? And um, seeing some cover up of some, by some people and things on the whole issue. And um, so I'm going to get into that. It's going to be a very interesting study. But like I said, I need to put all the scriptures together before I can do much with that. Um, so that's the one that's going to probably be coming up next unless I have some other thing I need to talk about. But uh, I guess that's going to be it. So hopefully I've answered your question on the thing of Revelation 3.12 to those out there that have asked it. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, 
Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.